So I just covered the whole thing. It looks like a mess. That's totally okay. And I take a condenser and just kind of additionally condense on top of everything. And I'm using moderate to even heavy force just to make sure I'm really condensing the amalgam. You don't want it to break. And so the first thing I do now, so I keep the matrix brand on, I take the football burnisher. It's still on the screen, right? All right, cool. This is so wide that it can't fall into your prep. It's not gonna go sinking in there. So I just kind of hold it horizontally and push mesial distally. Just push all the excess amalgam out of the way. Let me check that out. And it gets rid of a lot of the excess. And what I'm gonna do is pull that mat over here. Alright, so I blow away the excess. And it's still on the screen? Mm -hmm. Okay. So now I'm going to take the discoid cleoid because I, I prefer this one, but you see how this end is shaped like a leaf? Is that visible on mm -hmm. the camera mm -hmm. here? So I rest this on existing tooth structure. So I'll do a little drawing over here after this, but what I'm doing is resting the side of the leaf on the cuspal incline of each cusp. And the point of it is going into the amalgam. But I'm not I'm not just putting this into the amalgam and carving it freehandedly. I'm just resting this on what's already there and pulling. So I'm dragging this along and what it's gonna do is just remove any excess amalgam that's there for me. And it kind of just leaves my anatomy behind that I desire. And then for the distal portion, sometimes I just use the circle end because we've got a big chunk there. So can't do that in real life, so just air water syringe, obviously. And I'll use the circle end already leaning on existing tooth structure here. Just get rid of the excess. Maybe go back to this end if I feel like it. And the excess just gets scraped away. Tell me if it falls off the screen. Mm -hmm. Alright, so now um, I've done uh, most of the work for the occlusal anatomy. I'll still do a little more. I'll take what's called the acorn burnisher here. It's got a bigger end here. It's kind of shaped like a cone with a point on it. So if I were to try to put this into the prep here, like, can you see this? It can't, it can't go in there. It can't mess up your amalgam too much. So what I do is I go into the distal area of the pit here and I just kind of push. You see a dot there? That's one pit. And I go in the center. I don't push as hard here because the prep tends to be larger. But push a little bit there. And just a little on the mesial because I don't want to disturb the ridge too much just yet. So now I have three pits, right? And we also want grooves to happen for anatomy. So we've got, you know, each molar's got kind of like a lingual developmental group here and a, and a buckle one here. And so I'm going to do that. One lingually. And I kind of always, I always just go out into out. And then I go buckley. Same thing here. So here. Push in the central uh, faucet a little bit, and then go lingually. And you can kind of see grooves forming, right? Mm -hmm. And the mesial will do the same thing, but just a little less pressure, because I don't want to disturb the ridge too much. And also kind of go around each cusp. I don't really like draw a straight line, just I kind of just circle the cusp here, because that's what the grooves really are. And you see the anatomy kind of just coming out by itself? Mm -hmm. I'm not doing much here. It's just, the tools just do it. All right, so now um, I'm gonna go back to the ball burnisher with the football end. 
Um, I mean, with the bolt line, anyway. And I kind of just pat down the, the marginal ridge here a little bit. Because we're going to be we're going to be taking off the matrix band soon. But before I take off the matrix band, I want to just take off any excess and approximately here. So I want to take care of the occlusal embrasure. So what I do is I put the explorer tip in here, not all the way, just a little bit, and I kind of put pressure axially, like outward, against the matrix band. And I go from outward, right about here, gently here, don't push the amalgam too hard, into about halfway through the box, and I take it out. And then I'll do the same thing from the other side. You can see that, right? So then I'm going to put it right here with, against the band and go to about halfway into the box area and then pull it out. Uh, the only reason I don't want to across all the way is because I don't want to contact the enamel here and then push amalgam away and have an open margin or something. Restoration. Anyway, it doesn't have to be perfect right now. So now I'm going to take the matrix band off. So. I'm just going to loosen this, so don't mind me covering this, but... So we want to just take... I usually just take the top of my off first. And... We can keep that wedge in place. But sometimes I just keep my finger over the marginal ridge, just to, because I'm paranoid. And I'll pull the distal part out first. So now it's kind of easy to grab onto both ends. I'll also pull the wedge out while I'm at it. Now, still on the camera? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, you can either take your college pliers with, like, cut off a small, small piece of a cotton roll and, like, place it on the marginal ridge while you pull the matrix band out, or what I, like, out of habit, I just kind of grab both ends and just very slowly wiggle it out. <coughs> See? Didn't break anything yet. Hopefully. Um, so now... We want to carve out our, our, our marginal ridge. So we can use lots of stuff for this. I What is this called? This carver here. Does anyone oh, know? Hold them back. Hold them back? Is this a Hollenbeck? I thought it Thorpe. 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 Yeah, something like a Thorpe carver or something. What's hold them back? Uh, the Hollenbeck the waxing carver you have. Um, so we still have our discoid <laughs> cleoid out. We still have our ball burnisher out. We still have the acorn one out. And. What I'll do first, I'll take the round end on the discoid cleoid, and so we want, we see the mesial fossa here. It's a depression, so I kind of just hollow it out a little bit, really, really gently, because a fossa is a fossa, it's a depression. I can, it's literally scooped out, so that's what I'm doing, just a little bit. And like, in doing so, I'm leaving the ridge behind. Um, and I could also take the discoid cleoid leaf end also and just kind of take down the ridge height if I wanted to because I'm comparing it to the height of the adjacent ridge here so I can even if this cover works for you you can kind of gauge that here you can hold it this way if you want to but it might be a little high especially towards the buckle I might have some flash there so back to the discoid cleoid I go So just a little, I just take that down a bit. And so this is this has a tapered point also. This one too. So if I wanted to, I can even widen the occlusal embrasure here a bit. So just really gently, not pushing too hard. Let's blow away any excess here. And so now if I look at it sideways here. I want to look at it approximately. If I did have a lot of bulging out amalgam because I had a lot of uh, buccal lingual flare to my prep, you could kind of see the amalgam from here. In this case, we can't, which is fine. But what I would what I would do in that situation, I take this cover since it's so narrow, and I would just lean on existing tooth structure, not into the amalgam, not digging into amalgam, and just kind of run it along. And any excess amalgam would just go away with that. Of, of the tooth you're prepping, or of the adjacent? Tooth? No, no, of, of the of the tooth I'm I'm restoring here. Sorry. You know, so like I mean, I just use this to ex as an example. Don't dig in. You're never digging your instruments into preparation. You know, you're just leaning on leaning on what's already there, and I just run it along. 
and the same thing from the other side if I had to. I don't think you need to here, but I'm just kind of showing you for example's sake. And you know, again, if you wanted to touch it lightly or just move, you know, move any little granular, you know, loose amalgam particles away, you can. But you can just touch it a little bit. And back to my acorn here because I like that one. Just right into the pit again a little bit. Into its grooves. Circle each cusp a bit. And the ball brandish I also use, kind of, it's like a broom almost, I just gets rid of any excess there. I feel that there's any excess amalgam here, so, you know, so it looks kind of a little dirty, you know, so I'm going to take another carver and just get rid of that. See, it's usually just loose in particles that are there on the surface. Remember, if it looks pretty, that's good for the practical. Mm -hmm. <laughs> See how that little excess comes away? But I'm only leaning on the cup, I'm not digging in here. Just gonna blow some air off this. And where's the ball burnisher again? I'm just going to kind of run it over the marginal ridge just to have have us like a smoother texture there. Yeah, you're not in the thing anymore. Oh, here we go. Better? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Also, your microphone's on. Is it? It's not working. Oh, come on. Hello? You're not on, right? Can anyone hear this microphone? No. Oh, well that sucks. Tony made a video so you guys can watch that. <laughs> Alright, anyway. And yep, here I go. And there you have it. See? You can kind of see you've got your, your fossa, your grooves there, you've got your marginal ridges intact. Um, mm -hmm. 